Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourselves, all those kind of things. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Great to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos using various software products. Today I'm in Luminar AI and I'm demonstrating the portrait tools. They're powerful. There are a lot of AI-based elements in these portrait tools. And frankly, they're just kind of fun. And I really think a portrait's kind of in two ways. There's kind of traditional portrait editing and then there's kind of creative portrait editing. And to be clear, if you've been here before, I'm not really a portrait uh, person. I don't take a lot of portraits, but with Luminar 4, some of the tools in there that were portrait-based got me a little bit more interested. And with Luminar AI, I'm even more interested. So while I haven't really become a portrait person or photographer, I'm definitely having a lot of fun in, uh, employing these tools and, and just editing my images with them. So I thought I would do a quick demo of each, kind of a traditional edit and then kind of a creative edit. So I'm gonna start with this photo. And by the way, these two photos both were downloaded for free on Unsplash. I'll put links to the artists that took them and shared them on Unsplash down below if you'd like to check out these photos or other work by these artists. But I just wanted to clarify that. This first one to me is kind of a corporate headshot kind of looking photo. So in this case, I'm gonna skip templates and go straight to the edit because there's really very few things I would do to this photo. It's shot well, it's lit well. I just think things look great. But there's a couple things that are kind of, I prefer to do basically. So I'm gonna start with face AI. And the first thing I'm gonna do is add a tiny bit of face light. And now, you know, you can really light up a face like that. That's not something I wanna do. So if you're at zero, I basically use my eye as the judge here. I'm not using a histogram or anything like that. I just like to look at the photo and visually just judge it basically and say, okay, I like this or I don't like it. So everything's pretty light. Again, this is a traditional edit using um, all the editing tools myself without the, um, implementation of a template. Slim face, really not very much needed here. These are gonna be very minor adjustments. Again, well shot, well lit, that sort of thing. Now with iris, you have the ability of course to change the color of the eyes. I'm not gonna do this. I am gonna add some eye whitening. I like to brighten those up a little bit and maybe a tiny bit of eye enhancer. The eye enhancer acts a little bit like clarity where it can give you a little bit of pop of crispness, for lack of a better word, around the eyes. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe a slight bit of dark circle removal and maybe a tiny bit of improved eyebrows, a little bit of lip saturation. Uh, I don't wanna do too much, you know, I don't wanna overdo that. So I think that looks pretty good. And then in the skin AI tool, I'm gonna do a tiny bit of that, which is kind of like skin smoothing or skin softening. Again, a very little amount, like maybe a 15, uh, but there is some shine on him from the light. So I'm gonna pull that shine removal up. I'm gonna go all the way to 100 just to see what it looks like. And I actually think that did a really good job there. So let me turn this off, especially the shine. I think the skin smoothing, you're not gonna see so much. But there, if you look at like the bridge of his nose and the top of his forehead, you can see that that has been improved significantly. Now there's countless things you could do for, from here if you wanted to, but I really think for a straight up kind of traditional portrait edit, if I do a before and after, you're not gonna see a massive difference. Uh, you know, it may not even be that noticeable. You can really see the shine and how that's come off. And now that I look at it, I actually might go back to face AI and pull that face light down a little bit. It was well lit, like I said, I don't know that it needs a whole lot of face lighting. Now let me go back to this before and after. So there's before, you can see the shine pretty significantly and after. Honestly, that's all that I would do. And while these tools, there's you know a, quite a few sliders and they're very powerful, there are a lot of times when you don't really need to do very much. And that's what's so great about these is you can just do a couple of sliders and if it was shot well and lit well to start with, you've got very little time you're gonna spend editing these photos. So I think if you're a portrait photographer, you're gonna enjoy these tools because they're powerful and quick. Again, not a lot of time needed. Now I'm gonna go get a different photo and I wanna do something a little bit more creative to sort of con contrast and compare what you can do with a traditional edit like this, which is, you know, again, I call it a corporate headshot. It may not necessarily be that, but it's a standard kind of traditional portrait, not a lot of creative that I would want to do to this. But on the other hand, the next one is gonna be something I wanna explore a lot more creative options with. Let's go get that one. So here we go, another photo off of Unsplash. And this young lady, I think it's just an interesting look and an interesting photo, and I wanna do a little bit more creative, but this is where I like to use templates. And so I'm gonna click on templates, and I was in this experimental collection. You'll see that for this photo, it suggests monochrome, experimental, or influencer. These are different categories of portrait tools. You can, by the way, go down and choose any category in any template that you want, even if it's not a portrait-oriented template. It doesn't matter, but I chose experimental, and I really like this cold frame, and as you see, as soon as I apply it, it changes the look of it color-wise and tone-wise, but also 
it's added a light leak, which I like. It's to me giving a little bit of that creative vibe that I'm talking about. Now I'm gonna go into edit and do some things. So actually, if I go to essentials, you can kind of see what's been used here. Light tools, structure, color, details. I'm assuming details, yeah, they're negative. Structure is yeah, negative as well. These things have softened up. And I think this is kind of a dreamy looking portrait. Even the initial one, unedited to me, is a little bit dreamy. Yeah, I think she's got an interesting face. She's got a like a nose piercing, really, um, again, I'm gonna use the word piercing, piercing eyes, that sort of thing. So I think a dreamy kind of look to this kind of works. So you can see what's been done there on the creative tab. It looks like they've used a LUT, yeah, cold frame. So if I turn that off, there's before and after for that LUT. And by the way, if you like that, you can take that and increase it to have more of that effect applied. And in fact, I am gonna leave it. Uh, I'm gonna put it at about 70, up from about 50 or so. So I like that. And then on the portrait tab, you can see it used some face AI. They did a little bit of light. Um, I might do a tiny bit of slim face. Again, you know, young, attractive lady, she really doesn't need a lot of work, um, just to be clear. One thing I am gonna do is the iris, I'm gonna change it to blue, simply because I can, um, but really partly because I think the, the softer, bluer tones that were added when I applied that template, it, I think it kind of works there, uh, more so than the kind of yellowish green that was there. I might take the visibility down a little bit so it's not too overdone, but if you turn this off and look at the before, there she is with kind of the little bit more of the greenish kind of brownish eyes, and now with the blue, it kind of works for me. Again, this is being creative. I, I will fully admit to this being completely fake, but that's part of the fun of this product. Um, I'm not gonna enlarge eyes. I think they look fine. I'm gonna add a little bit of whitening. I think that looks good. There's no red eye to worry about. Her eyebrows are plenty fine. Dark circles, really, they don't exist. Um, lips, I might add a little bit of saturation and redness, a little bit more than was present in the initial uh, template uh, application, and no teeth showing, so I'm gonna skip that. And then for skin, let's check this out. Yeah, there's a little bit of skin smoothing. I might add a little bit more, because I am going for a little bit more of a dreamy kind of look. The next thing I think I wanna do is go back over here, and I wanna get mystical and see what that looks like. And I'm kinda winging this, to be clear. Um, I would pre-picked out that template, but otherwise these edits are me just kinda riffing, spitballing, whatever you wanna call it, just kinda having fun. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. There's one thing that's bothering me, and that is the overall tone of the image is still a little bit too warm, especially in that bottom section. So I'm gonna go into light and see about pulling the temperature a little bit left, create a little bit more blue look. I like that. I think that's helped on her face. But if you look at her neck and her the top of her shoulders that are visible, there's way too much yellow. It doesn't really fit for me. So this where the local masking tool comes in. Now, you'll see there's already something there. That's a texture. That is where the light leak came from. But I'm gonna add a basic local mask. And what I wanna do is just pull this temperature down. So all I'm doing is looking at the bottom of the photo and trying to get rid of some of that warmth. Um, and I think something like that looks a little bit better. And now I wanna go grab a gradient mask and I'm just gonna apply this on the bottom of the photo, just kinda of blend it, something about like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but something like that I think looks a lot better. So if I hit the forward slash key, you can see how the mask is being applied. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna hit enter, and if I turn that off, if you look at that bottom portion of the photo, you can see her neck and her upper shoulders a bit more yellowy, kind of warm, and now that I turn this back on, it's a little bit cooler. I could also take the exposure down. I think there's a little bit of highlights there that I might wanna uh, pull down. Actually, I'm gonna pull that uh, exposure back up a little bit because I don't wanna create a big difference between uh, her neck and chin area, and there's already shadow on the the right-hand side of the frame, her left side. So I want to be careful about that. And this is something I just recommend taking a close look and paying attention to when you're applying these local masks that you're looking at how the light's being affected if you're doing things like highlights, shadows, exposure, all that. But if you turn this off and look at the before, you can see it's quite a bit warmer there in the bottom and the after. There it is. I think it looks a lot cooler and I like that look better. And the only other thing I think I would do is come in with a vignette and I'm going to pull that in and something maybe a little bit like that. I'm gonna try inner light, but I wanna be careful because I don't wanna to create too much brightness in her face. Maybe pull down and tighten that vignette a little bit. The center of the vignette is gonna to default to the center of the photo, which is basically probably right in the middle of her nose. So I think we're okay there. And I think I might go back over here and take a look at skin and look at shine removal because there's a little bit of shine on her. And let me just pull that all the way up to 100 and see what that does. 
Yeah, let me turn that off. There's before. Yeah, you can see the shine um, the, from the middle of her nose kind of to the left-hand side of the frame, which is her right side. There's a bit more shine. And now when I have applied that, there it is. It's a lot more subdued. And that's really it. That's a creative edit. All I wanted to do is show off some of these tools because I'm getting questions about them and some ideas for you, perhaps. I think for a corporate style headshot, like that first photo, that gentleman, very simple, straightforward edits, going straight to the editing tools, skipping over templates, because unless you're just wanting to experiment and do something, I feel like I could skip templates because I knew the edits I was gonna make to that one were very, very minor based on it already being well lit and well shot. On this creative portrait, however, I knew I wanted to do something different and creative. And while it was well lit and of course well shot, the templates, I think, gave me a nice starting point to do something a little bit more creative, which is basically color the, excuse me, changing the overall color tones and the temperature in the image and applying a light leak. And that kind of led me in this direction. So if you look at the before and after, there it is before, a lot warmer, a lot more subdued and kind of almost straightforward portrait. And now a lot dreamier, very different. And if I do the sliding window thing, you can see left to right, it's very different. And you may not like it, that's fine. I like it, I don't know if I'm 100% sold on it. I might come back and do some additional edits to it to make some additional changes. I don't know, I need to kind of sit on it a little bit but that's the beauty and the power of Luminar. Just wanted to show off some of the things that you can do and give you a demo of a traditional portrait versus a more creative portrait. Hope it helps, hope it gives you some ideas. Thanks for watching my friends. I'll be back soon with more stuff. You guys take care of yourselves and adios.